Jumping back into the action now and reviewing a couple more games that I I had to talk about because looking at this next game that we have coming up, the Chiefs win the Super Bowl rematch 28-18 to over the San Francisco 49ers. And this rematch, you know, looking back at the Super Bowl, it wasn't that close in, in score, obviously, like it was back in February. The Chiefs entered this game as still the only undefeated team in the NFL, and they entered with a perfect record, and they walked out of San Francisco without a blemish on their perfect record with that 28-18 to win. The 49ers now lose back-to-back -back home games to fall to under 500, and now they're sitting at 3-4. and four. Um, And just looking at this 49ers team, because this segment's going to be mostly about them, um... Just the up and down season that they've had so far. You know, we start off with a win against the Jets, then we lose back to back games um, against the Rams, and the the other team is escaping my mind. But you lose back to back games after that victory with the Jets. I have it here. They lose to the Vikings, and then they lose to the Rams. Then you beat the the Patriots. Obviously, you were going to win that game. Then you lose to the Cardinals. You beat the Seahawks, and then you lose once again. To the uh to the forty nine to the Kansas City Chiefs just this past Sunday and now not only that but and how inconsistent the the level of play has been but not only that you have injuries to deal with because Debo was I think diagnosed with some sort of pneumonia you know he was hospitalized I think after the game as well so he didn't finish the game and basically um you know didn't play at all because of that illness and also during the game you know Ayuk suffered an ACL injury that is going to require surgery so he's out the remainder of the year and now you look at this wide receiver room and how really poor it looks right now just in terms of who they have available plus you add on that Christian McCaffrey you don't really know when he's going to play so the outlook on this 49ers team is looking is looking pretty dire and that's why I felt like Regardless of all these injuries, you know, we didn't predict that Ayuk was going to get hurt or that Debo was barely going to play. But still, the the Chiefs had so many injuries themselves, you know, with Pacheco and Rasheed Rice and Hollywood Brown and, and those guys not being able to play. And we look at the numbers, just the stats itself. Patrick, I believe, has thrown more interceptions than he's thrown touchdown passes this year. And the fact that they're still undefeated and still not playing relatively great... Um, I felt like this was it. This was the chance for the 49ers to get a win over the reigning Super Bowl champions to kind of get this monkey off of their back. And for them to fall the way that they did, and I know they were still, you know, the, the whole narrative is that, you know, Brock just wasn't throwing at anybody. How do you expect him to win? Uh, throwing to Ronnie Bell or these other guys, Ricky Pearsall, who who just came off of that devastating uh, injury that he had to deal with, but I would ask the same question to to who's Patrick throwing to, right? Who's Patrick throwing to on offense? Because Juju Smith Schuster didn't play either. Um, it's basically Miko Hardman, Noah Gray, Travis, but the the Forty ers still have George Kittle, um, and they just run the ball better than the Forty ers do at this point. So, if these two teams, if we're supposed to consider them equals, like they're the they're two of the best teams in the NFL, and we can't hold them to the same standard when both of them are dealing with bad injuries and probably the same amount of bad injuries. Then they're not. Then they're not equally the same team. They're not equally as good as we'd want to believe. Then the 49ers just aren't as good as the Chiefs are, and a lot of people don't want to admit it. I'm not going to say their Super Bowl windows closed or anything like that, but maybe just this year, based on the circumstances and everything like that. Maybe they're just not as good as the Chiefs are this year. Maybe they're not one of the better teams compared to, um, compared to I don't know. I mean, looking at the the entire NFC, I, I would probably take all three NFC North teams over them. I know there's four, but I'm not taking the Bears over them. I would probably take the the Lions over them. I'd take the the Packers over them. I would take the Vikings over them right now. You look at the the NFC East, the Commanders. I don't think they're that far off from each other based on how both of them have looked so far this year. And and, and then I think it's close between the Eagles and the Falcons. I really do. I was going to mention the Bucks, but they're um, they're dealing with a lot of injuries. So I, I wouldn't say 
they're in that group anymore. But really, the Eagles and the Falcons, they're not too far away from the 49ers, if at all. So, um, it just feels like something is off with this team. I don't really know what that is. Um, you know, could it be could it be a different defensive coordinator? There was a lot made of the fact that uh, Steve Wilkes was fired, and a lot of people weren't happy about that. So you bring in Nick Sorensen, I believe. I believe Nick is his first name. I know Sorensen is his last name. You bring him as a defensive coordinator, and you know it, it just hasn't looked quite the same. Or it could be just as simple as no Christian McCaffrey, but still, you have a lot of good players. I know there's a good amount of them injured right now after the game, but still with Debo, still with George Kittle. Um, even Jordan Mason has looked pretty decent. I don't think it could just all be that we don't have Christian. Now we're looking like a 3-4 and four team, right? Because if that was the case, um, this team is... Then I think we'd be diminishing the, the impact that all the other players have. So I don't think it can be just the fact that Christian's hurt. Um, the injuries are obviously a big thing. Um, we can't ignore that, but in this game just around the context of everything, this team is still good enough to, I thought, to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, but maybe not. Um, then you look at the, the ongoing narrative, right? Maybe Brock Purdy is just not that good. And I'd like to give Brock some more credit. I don't think, I don't buy into the whole idea that he's just on this sort of super team because I feel like if that was so evidently clear, I feel like they wouldn't make it as far as they did because he's had to make some pretty big throws. He's had to make some pretty big plays himself to kind of help the 49ers get to where they've been over the last couple of years. So I don't really believe it's that. Um, and then you look at maybe maybe everybody else in the NFC has just gotten better. Maybe while the 49ers have just been running it back, albeit with a good team, maybe everybody else has just caught up. And now uh, in this very odd very unfortunate year for the 49ers where they're dealing with a lot of injuries. Maybe everybody else is just a lot better that they can compete with the 49ers and even beat the 49ers now that they have all their players injured as well. So it could be any of those things. It could be none of those things, but it's just really hard to to pick out what it is about this team because um, we look at the Chiefs and another thing about the Chiefs uh, and this game, it was like how how they have all these players injured, right, passing game-wise. And, you know, Patrick hasn't looked like himself at all this year. Like I said, he's thrown more interceptions than he's thrown passing touchdowns. But they're still the only undefeated team, the quote-unquote best team in the NFL, right, because they're still undefeated. Um, and they've been able to mold themselves around this idea that, all right, we have all these guys injured. Let's just become a running team now. Let's go and get Kareem Hunt off of the couch bring him in and look like he's been playing in the NFL. It looks like he's been our lead back for the last two times we've been to the Super Bowl, right? It's very uncanny what they're able to just plug and play and how creative they are in, uh, in being successful with everything that they do. They hardly ever beat themselves. And, um, you know, Patrick does make mistakes. He's made a couple of mistakes with these turnovers, right? But um, even still... When the moment comes, when they have to make those big plays or when um, their defense has to step up, it always feels like they make the right play. And Patrick, it, the, the plays that he made in, in this game were insane. And you can live with some of those. You know, the run that he had on the left side where it looked like he was going out of bounds and somehow he stayed in bounds, had the balance to kind of pivot and just turn up field and go for another, like, 15. That's as just unrealistic as unpredictable as it gets from Patrick so you can kind of live with that but you know you have him trucking people getting into the end zone like it's it's those type of things plus the running the running game that they have now that um I think separates them from a lot of teams right being able to just adjust on the fly like this and um the biggest thing is they hardly ever beat themselves which is true um, and I think in this game, the, the 49ers certainly had chances. They had a couple chances where they cut the lead down to 14 to 12. But after that, you know, the, the 49ers threw back to back interceptions with the Chiefs scoring um, a touchdown in between both of those interceptions. So they ballooned the lead up to 21 to 14. And um, they threw another touchdown after that as well. So it's, um, it's a missed opportunity, all in all. I. 
really felt like the 49ers had to get this win because now, like I said, you're three and four. And in the in these big games where you, you have to have it, where you have to have it to it, I think prove it to yourself that you still belong in these conversations. Because if you look at the games that they've played against the the quote unquote best teams, you know, they lost the Vikings, they um this was their really only other big game considerably because you had the Chiefs and the Vikings who are two of the best teams. Everybody else, you know, the Jets are two and five, so that win doesn't really look so impressive. The the Rams are also two and five or two and four, I believe, as well. They lost to them. The the Patriots are one and six right now. The the Cardinals, I guess, but they lost to them and they're three and four. They have the same record as them. The the Seahawks are four and three. They managed to beat them. I guess that one's pretty impressive. But then you get blown, not blown out, but you lose by 10 points at home to the Chiefs. So just based on those results alone, to me, it just says that you're closer to being to the Rams or you're closer to being to the Cardinals or even the Seahawks, really, than you are being to the Vikings, the Lions, the the Chiefs at this point in time. It's not completely over, obviously. I don't want to make it seem like I'm giving up on them. But this next game at home again against the Dallas Cowboys, they have no choice but to win that game because of the history between those two teams because of how how bad the Cowboys have been uh they have to beat that team because if they don't and they fall to three and five and lose to the Cowboys at home that would really be a slap in the face I think to everybody in that organization if the Cowboys for how bad they've been and how bad everyone's talked about them this year for them to beat the 49ers would be a whole different thing that um we could and that we could potentially talk about next Monday. But for right now, that's where the 49ers are. It's getting pretty close to being full code red panic meter for uh, for them, but we're just barely hanging on by a thread. So we'll leave that game there, and we're going to talk about one more topic I wanted to get to, that being the Texans and the Packers game. It was a very entertaining matchup between two of the contending teams, I would say, in the NFL. So we're going to recap that and uh, give my thoughts on it here to just close out today's show.